Dr. Jason Saunders here, and today we're gonna cover pulmonary oxygen toxicity. In our last video, we did discuss the fact that there are two types of oxygen toxicity, CNS, or central nervous system oxygen toxicity, and pulmonary oxygen toxicity. CNS oxygen toxicity affects the brain and the central nervous system, while pulmonary oxygen toxicity affects the lungs. In central nervous system oxygen toxicity, there's really no equation to figure it out. There's no, there's no definitive uh, rhyme or reason to say, this is why that patient got it or that they'll ever get it again. The Lorraine Smith effect, pulmonary oxygen toxicity, named by Lorraine Smith, that is a little bit more specific in terms of there is an equation that you actually can use to figure this out. And, and once we understand that equation, we can then apply that to our hyperbaric sessions to make sure that we are keeping our patients extremely safe and away from pulmonary oxygen toxicity. And so symptoms include substernal irritation, some pain on inspiration, reduced vital capacity, a dry cough. Ultimately, this is really to contrast CNSO2 toxicity. This is a moderate or could be high amount of oxygen for a really long period of time. So this is not a moment in time. This happens from repeated exposures over a period of time. And ultimately, high oxygen levels can literally destroy lung tissue. And so we can't keep people on high levels of oxygen for really long periods of time. You'll see that patients that are on oxygen often have a cannula, and let's say they're being treated at home on a concentrator, they might only be getting two to four liters of oxygen through that concentrator while they're breathing you know, ambient air around with that. And that's to keep people away from having issues like pulmonary oxygen toxicity. So there is an equation, like I said, and it's relatively simple. It's what's the pressure of your environment that you're in? Right now I'm at sea level, so that would be one atmosphere. What's the amount of oxygen percentage that you're breathing? So right now, let's say I'm breathing 21% oxygen. And how many minutes did you breathe that oxygen? The idea here is that oxygen toxicity is when a patient gets 1,440 units. How does that number come up? So that's basically being at one atmosphere, breathing 100% oxygen for an entire day. So 24 hours in a day, it's 1,440 minutes. So one atmosphere times 100% oxygen, one times one times 1,440 minutes equals 1,440 units of oxygen or oxygen tolerance units as they're called in pulmonary oxygen toxicity. If you're breathing 100% oxygen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you are gonna have oxygen toxicity guaranteed. Now that we know that equation, we can apply that and to understand how that comes up in hyperbaric uh, settings. While 1,440 is pulmonary oxygen toxicity, what we would say is that 825 units is the amount required to have a reduced vital capacity of about 4%. So not only do we not wanna get 1,440 units, we certainly don't even want to get 825. In fact, any signs and symptoms that we're starting to exceed pulmonary oxygen limits, we should back off from that. And so knowing the 825 and then calculating your hyperbaric sessions, you can start to see how close patients may or may not be from being exposed to uh, that amount of hyperbaric oxygen. So I wanted to just give you a few examples. So if we were breathing, you know, uh, one atmosphere at 100% oxygen for the entire day, that's 1,440 oxygen tolerance units. If you're breathing 100% oxygen at one atmosphere for 825 minutes, that would get you the 825 oxygen tolerance units. If we went to 1.3, which would be the pressure of a soft chamber, and you were breathing 94% oxygen, and you did that for 90 minutes, so it would be 1.3 times 0.94, 94% oxygen times 90 minutes, you would get 110 oxygen tolerance units. How about 1.5? So you go a little bit deeper, 1.5 atmospheres at 100% oxygen for 90 minutes. Now we're looking at 135 oxygen tolerance units. If we go deeper yet, two atmospheres, 100% oxygen for 90 minutes, that's a good long session at much higher pressure, you're still only at 180 oxygen tolerance units. Let's go even further. Let's say you were doing double sessions. So you did two atmospheres at 100% oxygen for 180 minutes that day, you're still at 360. So even if you're at a pretty aggressive treatment plan, understand that you know, you're still typically very well below pulmonary oxygen toxicity limits. And even from the 825, where vital capacity could be reduced by up to 4%. So, you know, the point here is to say, you need to know these 
You need to know what central nervous system oxygen toxicity is. You should definitely know what pulmonary oxygen toxicity is. And you should understand how to keep your patients safe from being exposed to either one of these. And as you can see with this one in particular, if you calculate those sessions out, we are nowhere near pulmonary oxygen toxicity, even with relatively aggressive hyperbaric sessions. Somewhere along your path in hyperbaric medicine, someone's gonna come up to you and say, don't you know that oxygen is dangerous? Patients can get hurt if they get exposed to too much oxygen. And what you're gonna now be able to say is, oh yeah, of course, yeah, I know that. You know, hyperbaric oxygen is amazing. It does help a lot of people with a lot of different issues, but of course, too much of even a good thing could cause a lot of damage. Did you know that there is actually two types of oxygen toxicity? There's central nervous system oxygen toxicity and there's pulmonary oxygen toxicity. Central nervous system oxygen toxicity starts to become apparent at around a pressure of 2.0 and more. And so we know to watch for all the signs and symptoms of central nervous system oxygen toxicity. And we know that if we ever see any of the signs and symptoms, we immediately remove the oxygen, bringing their pressure of oxygen in their body down. And within five minutes, we'll know if we can continue our treatment or if we should really come back to the surface that day. And then pulmonary oxygen toxicity, well, that we can calculate. And so we know that 1,440 units of oxygen in a given 24-hour period would be pulmonary oxygen toxicity. We also happen to know that 825 units still decreases vital capacity by up to 4%. And so in order to keep our patients as safe as possible, we keep them even below the 825 units per 24 hours. Now, of course, you also know that the clock resets every 24 hours. So, you know, each day we get to start that process over again. And our standard treatments in our clinic are typically between 100, 125 to maybe 300 units in any given day. And so knowing that we obviously, we are able to keep our patients nice and safe and, and very far away from either type of oxygen toxicity. So if you know those details and you're able to explain it that way, now not only are you in charge and knowing that you're keeping your clinic and your patients safe, but you could also have these conversations with people who may want to challenge oxygen and oxygen safety. And I think it's important that we master those concepts, you know, as well as we can. So hope that helps you understand central nervous system oxygen toxicity and pulmonary oxygen toxicity and be able to have these conversations with people in your future. Thanks a lot. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way. And that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top, you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.